And I now call upon the next speaker, the Prime Minister and Minister for Itauke Affairs, Sugar Industry and Foreign Affairs, the Honorable Chosaya Bainimaram, to take. You have. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I am at uh, home in isolation after coming in contact with a positive case. I speak to you today in support of a people's budget, a uh, budget fit for the purpose of uh, guiding us to the end of uh, the pandemic. Mr. Speaker, sir, before I begin my response, I would uh, like to uh, congratulate our Team Fiji for the first win in the Tokyo Olympics. Uh, still a long uh, way away, and uh, it'll be a tough week for them, and also for us watching. We are counting on our Olympians to fight hard and uh, show the world what our small country can do. We are all with them in spirit. Mr. Speaker, after a full year without the virus, we are in a fight of our own against the variant of COVID-19 that exploits uh, every opportunity it is given to spread. We are adapting, we are making great sacrifices to protect ourselves and we are racing to administer life-saving vaccines. I am vaccinated as you are, Honorable Speaker. In other words, uh, we both have received the two doses and more than 70% of adults in Fiji have received one or both doses. Our mission is to fully vaccinate 80% of the adults in Fiji by the end of October. Our people's health and our economy's uh, recovery depend on meeting that goal. And we are acting decisively to reach it or even exceed it. Anyone uh, keeping a close eye on our daily COVID updates knows that the worst effects of this virus, severe diseases and death, are among the unvaccinated Fijians. The story, Mr. Speaker, is the same around the world. Overseas, in countries where vaccines have been available for months, people who refuse the vaccines are dying in hospitals. The stories are heartbreaking. Moments before they succumb to the virus, these uh, former anti-vaxxers are begging doctors to vaccinate them. By then, it is too late. We will not uh, meekly accept pre uh, preventable death in Fiji by needlessly stalling our vaccine, uh, vaccine campaign. We have worked with our development partners like Australia, New Zealand, India, and the United States to bring these vaccines to Fiji. And we will not squander the protection they provide. We have the chance to save lives and we'd be fools not to take it. That is why employers, employees, and all those receiving government assistance in Fiji must be vaccinated. To the bush lawyers who want to litigate th that mandate, I ask, do you want us to remain an island of disease and desolation in a world that is moving on from the virus? Do you want to let lies, misinformation, and unholy insanity lead people into early graves? Do you want to continue to overload our healthcare system, making it more difficult for people who suffer conditions that are not preventable to get treatment? Do you want to continue to put our frontline health workers at risk? How about our children and the elderly? The people who are refusing to accept the vaccines threaten to use up the people's resources and make their fellow citizens pay for their foolishness. When they become sick, they will beg for help 
in an 11th hour conversion to sanity and sobriety. They will call for an ambulance and cry to be saved from the virus they dismissed as in insignificant. And we will do our best for them because our humanity will outweigh the smug ignorance. Protection through vaccine is our duty to ourselves. It is our duty to each other. It is our duty to the world. When we reach our vaccine goal, our lives can return to normal, at least some form of normal that feels much more familiar than today. This budget meets the once in a century challenge upon us with creativity. It lifts the burden cost for Fijians across every sector to the, of the economy. It keeps taxes low on businesses. It prepares us for a long awaited recovery. It is the most resourceful budget we've ever announced. And I thank our Attorney General and Minister for Economy for leading the formulation of the budget and the economic framework it provides for the new normal. I also wish to thank members of his team, several of whom I understand tested positive for the virus, yet they continue to work from home to help finalize the budget. Mr. Speaker, this budget did not shy away from tough decisions. Across my portfolios, total budgetary allocations have been reduced. The same goes across government, and these cuts to expenditure come as no surprise. We have to do more with less. It is said that uh, necessity is the mother of all invention. It should also be called the father of efficiency. And the ministries of foreign affairs, Tokyo affairs, and the sugar industry that I lead are ready to show by example how physical diligence and efficient service delivery can coexist. I believe we will be a better government, supported by a better and more efficient civil service for having endured this ordeal. I, for one, think we could all do with less cake and other unnecessary indulgences at government events. That's one cut to my ministry's budget that I'm happy to make permanent. Even small cuts are important because we are in a situation that simply cannot tolerate excesses. Mr. Speaker, our strong friendships around the world have paid off in many important ways, including vaccines and direct budgetary support into our internationally trusted social safety net. This did not happen overnight. The support we received builds on years of effective diplomacy to strengthen our ties and win the respect of the countries that are most important to us. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs will continue our international engagement, mainly virtually to uphold Fiji's proud place in global affairs. Our leadership for climate action will continue, as will our advocacy for the ocean, for nutrition security, for gender equality, and for the many noble aims that we have uh, fought for years to achieve at home and for humanity as a whole. Throughout our global engagement, we are delivering a simple message. An unequal recovery from COVID-19 will leave us all more vulnerable to the forces we fought before this pandemic, like climate change and oceans degradation. By addressing matters at home on climate, oceans, and the environment, we are creating good green and blue jobs for our people through the new Jobs for Nature and uh, the Fijian Stewardship of Tires program. Mr. Speaker, that is Fiji the way the world should be, a nation that walks the talk about sustainable development. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Tokyo Affairs will continue its mission to empower the Itoke people through the next financial year. We are continuing assistance to landowners looking to make uh, productive productive uh, use of their land so they can turn their assets into cash generating vehicles and build generational wealth for their communities. But Mr. Speaker, our efforts on behalf of all Itoke landowners have been maligned and internationally represented. 
they have been distorted beyond all recognition by opposition politicians who wish to create resentment and ethnic division that they can ride to power. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, they are riding an old nag, a sway-backed horse that they found in the darkest corners of Fiji's history. We prefer progress and economic opportunity for all Fijians. And that means helping Itoke landowners use their assets to improve their lives and livelihoods and become more prosperous. Here's the problem that the bill fixes, Mr. Speaker. Even though someone may have a registered lease on Itoke land, which means that TLTB has uh, obtained consent from the land owning unit and the premium and lease terms and conditions have all been met. They still have an uphill struggle with bureaucracy to carry out development on that land. Even if it clearly falls within the terms and conditions of the lease, say you lease three acres of Itauke land for your retirement home, but to build your home on that lease land, you want to connect the land to water, water supply, or get a better financier to construct a bigger home. Doing so does not violate the terms of your lease. Still, you have to get approval from the TLTB. You want to get, uh, you want electricity to the land. You have to get approval from the TLTB. You want to add a new road on the land, or you want to change your financial. Guess what? It's back to the TLTB for, for approval. And these approvals can take months or even years depending on where the land is and which officer you are dealing with. Something as simple as making sure that there is water running when you turn on the tap. Such a bureaucratic legal requirement has not only made the Tauke land unattractive, in particular for individuals, but it gave opportunity to corruption, which we cannot tolerate. So we propose an amendment to the Tauke Land Trust Act that makes a simple administrative change, simple administrative change to remove the TLTB's tedious approval process for development on leased land, on leased land. Cutting these red tapes makes Itauke land, uh, leased land more attractive to potential leases, to potential lessees, I'm sure, I'm sorry. And that makes the land more valuable. And that increase in market value will directly increase the incoming, uh, increase the incoming uh, land union, union, uh, land owning units will receive from leased land as they are entitled to receive under our constitution. Mr. Speaker, that's what this amendment does. It helps landowners generate more income. Unfortunately, we are up against an opposition that thinks income is a dirty word. They think development is a dirty word. They think access to water and electricity should be, should be held up by time-wasting approvals. Every day, since the budget announcement, they've been super spreaders of lies about the amendment. They have been lying to the ordinary Toke people. It's pathetic. It's political and it's a waste of the nation's time. We should all be focused on beating the pandemic and reviving the economy through this budget but their entire party is built on scaring the Itoke people into submission. They cannot stand the idea of masses of well-informed, financially stable, and prosperous Itoke people, because that means an end to their political careers. Honorable Ngavoka is going on about guardianship of the TLTB. Is that what he calls months of delays for even the most basic of approvals? There is no need for the TLTB to weigh in to grant approval for every development-related decision, which a bona fide lessee operating under a registered lease that has the terms and conditions of lease which the land owning unit has agreed to is making. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> excuse me, all of this is uh, confirmed by CEO of TLTB, Mr. Tevita, 
kurubakan doa yesterday. I urge, urge everyone watching and listening, please read what the CEO of TLTB has stated. So I suspect, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Ngavoka and many men and women who are hanging on uh, tenaciously to this self-imploding party called Sodapa will not back off from their opposition. They have put themselves in a corner and they do not want, they do not have the humility to admit the merits of this amendment. But no one, Mr. Speaker, no one has had the gall to lie more boldly or more often than Honorable Tambuya about this amendment. Just uh, this morning, Mr. Speaker, someone sent me part of her uh, statement last night to say that because the Fiji First has a, a major, majority in Parliament, we can change the Constitution. I think uh, she should spend more time reading the Constitution than doing, doing TikTok. I think she, has a bit, uh, she was a bit embarrassed after proposing that the government print more money to put in people's FNPF accounts. That is an option that has been tried <coughs> and discredited time and again because it has led to hyperinflation and economic ruin. It has destroyed people's lives, uh, people's uh, savings, and um, stifled productive investment. I guess she got the message. Maybe someone brought her a history book. Maybe someone from TikTok Zimbabwe reached out and asked her if she was crazy enough to repeat Zimbabwe's experience. Now, instead of advocating these loony ideas that would destroy the Fijian dollar, she's run back to more familiar turf, lying to the people of Fiji. I fear, Honorable Speaker, that we have a compulsive liar in our midst. I have some easy to follow advice for those on the front end of our lies about the bill. Read it, read the bill, read the constitution, it's on the parliament website, read it. When you read it, you'll see how simple it really is. With this amendment, the landowners still set the terms and conditions on the basis on which they will lease their land, as is their right. It is their land and it is their decision. And this amendment does not change the process, nor does it any, in any way disfranchise landowners. It simply does away with needless approvals from the TLT, TB, the TLTB. By doing so, investors will be more interested in Itoke land. That raises the value of all Itoke land in Fiji. As a direct result, our landowners will have more money in their pockets, not because we are printing it, as Honorable Tambuya suggested, but because we are taking practical administrative measures to bring the value of the land up and increase lease income. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, we, the Toke people, own 91% of the land in Fiji. We are the biggest landlords in Fiji. We should act like it. We should act with economic foresight by making our land attractive and available with secure market tenure. We should stop listening to politicians who want us to live in fear, who want us to be caught in a time warp and not realize our true potential. Because when more Itoke land is developed, the economy grows. When the economy grows, of course, more jobs are created. There is more money in circulation. And Fiji overall becomes more prosperous. Honorable Nengama said that uh, time has changed. Time has certainly changed. It was the Banimarama government that substantially removed administrative rates that TLTB used to deduct from and, from and lease monies. TLTB used to clear 25% of lease income off in administrative costs. Now, that figure is down to 10%. Less waste, less bureaucracy, more money for landowners. Time has certainly changed. Thanks to the Bainimarama government and now Fiji First government commitment to equality, the money from this payment is distributed equally among members of the land owning unit. 
We have, uh, we even have trust accounts set up for children from landowning units. In some instances, they will be extremely wealthy. A couple, I understand, will be millionaires by the time they access their funds at the age of 18. Time has certainly changed. Honorable Nangaman, I want the Toke who are young, the women, those who are about to turn 18, and the two often marginalized members of the land owning units to remember that the equal share you are currently enjoying or about to access was all opposed by the Sodelpa leadership and members and the NFP, which never openly supported equal distribution. Mr. Speaker, we do these things because we are a government that looks out for the economic well being of the Toke and all other Fijians. We don't lie to people. We serve the people. Past governments gave away Tokay land under the justification of economic development. We have never struck that bad deal, and we never will, because we believe community held land has an uh, intrinsic and intergenerational value that must be protected. We believe we can have economic development without giving up Tokay land permanently. Mr. Speaker, the work of the Ministry of the Sugar Industry has protected cane farmers from pandemic price swings for cane because we have maintained a stable guaranteed floor, price floor of $85 per ton. That promise from government has uh, kept food on the table in uh, cane farmers' homes. As announced in the budget, we are guaranteeing $85 a ton for two seasons. Mr. Speaker, you may recall that there was an effort to organize a protest by cane farmers against the government. It fell flat on its face. And why? It failed because cane farmers know manure when they smell it. The government has been straight with the cane farmers. We have worked in their interests. They know that. And they trust this government to do what we say we will do. We always have, we always will. And we thank them for delivering cane that is being crushed as we gather here today. Mr. Speaker, imagine if cane farmers had listened to the politicians who wanted them to protest and withhold their cane. Imagine that the mills had sat quiet. Imagine that no cane was exported, no money was paid. Imagine that our cane growers had to endure this crisis with no money in their pockets at all. That, Mr. Speaker, shows the quality of the selfish, power-obsessed people we are up against. Want to be politicians who are so desperate for power and so bereft of ideas that they are willing to leave cane farmers destitute just to elevate themselves. I want to thank our farmers for choosing their livelihoods over the lies being told by these demagogues. You will always find your government in your corner. Through the next year, with the elections on the horizon, we'll see those same so-called leaders go to great lengths yet again to use you to help themselves. In the same way, you see Sodelpa and those political parties allied with them create fear about losing ownership of land, even knowing that the law guarantees the Tauke land ownership. These cheap politicians will always try to use you. Don't let them. Cast them aside and let's work together freely and harmoniously to prosper together. Mr. Speaker, this budget is unlike others because the health of our people and the health of our economy have never before been intertwined. Within six months, our economy has a chance to begin its recovery in earnest as we go about our normal business at home and open our borders to welcome back visitors from the board. That future depends on more of us being vaccinated. We are very, very, very close to our goal. 75% of our target population, all of the eligible adults in Fiji have received at least one dose of the vaccine. We need to get uh, to 80% with both, both doses, at least. I want to get 100%. That means all of us will be protected. And that's the goal I want us to set for ourselves. But 80% is the threshold that will bring our economic recovery in reach. Mr. Speaker, it became quite clear immediately after the budget 
the last thing the opposition members wanted to talk about was the actual budget itself. That is because it is a good budget. They are clamoring for any distraction they can create. And I've had to spend much of this statement addressing the lies they've been telling. And they will not shake our focus on passing the budget that the nation needs. And we will pass it. Because it is the budget our people deserve at this time. Mr. Speaker, as our healthcare team continues going on every imaginable length to treat those most vulnerable to the virus, I also want to take this opportunity to urge every Fijian to follow the advice we've had countless times from Dr. Fong and his teams. Wear your mask, keep your distance from others, install Care Fiji on your phone, and stay home if you feel unwell or have been in contact with someone who's COVID positive. Don't wait to be tested if you feel sick. Stay home where it is safe rather than risk the health of others. And please be vaccinated. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.